particular scientist, but uh, I believe so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's definitely the only planet we've I got. I was going to ask you about any <laughs> options, but fine. OK. Um, I agree with you. And I think, you know, the reason we love sport is that because it's not just about the elite uh, the heroes at the top. We're all involved, you know, as players, supporters. And sport is for everyone, no matter what your standard is or your background. So I think for that reason, uh, sport can teach us about looking after our, our planet. We can't just sit and watch. We can only make progress if every single one of us is part of the team. Well, that's all from the 2022 BBC Green Sport Awards. Time for us to turn the power off. <laughs> Thanks for the loan of the studio, lads. No problem. And until next year, goodbye. Goodbye. Nice one. We'll call you, Mark. Yeah, I was going to say, if you do need anyone to help out... Yeah, we'll like, call you, Mark. Yeah, all right, Mark. Come I on. am around Come the rest on. of the evening. Come on, Mark. Let's, let's get out of here. I've got anything else in the diary just in case, so... <laughs> yeah, I'll... Thank you. Yeah. All right, I'll call just, you. Mate, just let you. Yeah, let me know. Hello. It was a pretty chilly but sunny start for some of you today. And across the south and east of England in particular, we'll hold on to that sunshine into the afternoon. But it's a day of change in that wet and windy weather is now spreading in across some northern areas. It's this weather system here. Links into an air of low pressure around Iceland. Bring a metre of snow for some here through uh, Sunday. But for us, it's rain and it's developing gales. Spreading through the rest of the day across much of uh, Scotland, Northern Ireland. Uh, some of that rain heavy at times, particularly in the hills in the west. Some brighter skies out to the far west later on. Uh, rain fairly erratic across eastern Scotland. And by the end of the afternoon, Cumbria, Isle of Man, northwest Wales will see some of that rain arrive. Much of England Wales will stay dry, 17, 18 degrees here, but with a strengthening wind. Those winds, though, to the north and the west will hit gale force at times, particularly around a rain band and more especially across Scotland, where we could see winds gusting over 60 miles an hour. That continues in the far north tonight. But for the first part of the night, uh, rain in uh, northern England and Wales, that will gradually clear. Rain spreads to the southwest Midlands and parts of East Anglia later on. A milder night here compared with last night, a fresher night further north where the sky is clear and one or two showers will be dotted around for Monday. Now for the Monday morning commute, East Anglia, the southeast of Channel Islands, here's where you'll see some rain or drizzle first thing before the sunshine comes out. Lots of sunshine around, in fact, through Monday afternoon. But North Wales, Northwest Midlands, Northwest England, uh, Scotland and Northern Ireland continue to see a few showers around, feeling a little bit fresh in the breeze, which is coming from a more northwesterly direction. And as the winds fall light with that cooler air in place, particularly chilly night through Monday into Tuesday morning. Monday night we can see... Temperatures in the towns and cities of England and Wales around 4 or 5 degrees. Some rural areas, like this morning, will see a frost. But like this morning, a fair bit of sunshine around. One or two mist of fog patches for Tuesday morning. Tuesday, though, overall, a dry day. Increasing amounts of cloud, especially in the west. Some drizzle later for western Scotland, Northern Ireland. And temperatures down a little bit more of experience through this weekend. And then for the middle part of the week, a weakening weather front pushes across us. But it's later on, as deeper areas of low pressure push in on a strengthening jet stream, we'll see some more substantial spells of rain and stronger winds, particularly across the north and the west of the country. Still a little bit of rain possible to the south, but here not a huge amount of rain expected once again this week. Bye for now. This is BBC News with the latest headlines for viewers in the UK and around the world. Russia investigates how and what caused the explosion that severely damaged its state-of-the-art and well-defended bridge to Crimea. Officials in the Ukrainian city of Zaporizhia say 17 people have been killed by a Russian missile strike on an apartment block. Former UK Culture Secretary Nadine Doris says Prime Minister Liz Truss needs to change course if she wants to keep the party together and avoid facing a wipeout at the next general election. I'm still one of Liz's biggest supporters. Um, but you have to uh, put that into the context of the fact that we are 30 points behind Labour in the polls. 
In Iran, protesters appear to hack into state-run television as demonstrations against the regime continue. Tributes have been paid to the 10 victims of a huge explosion at a petrol station in the Republic of Ireland. And Max Verstappen has secured his second Formula One World Championship after winning the Japanese Grand Prix. Hello and welcome if you're watching in the UK or around the world. Russian divers are beginning a fuller examination of the damage caused by Saturday's explosion to the bridge linking Russia with Crimea. The Kremlin had previously hailed the bridge as one of its best, most modern and well-defended structures. Although limited traffic has resumed along one carriageway, a section of the other was brought down by the blast. These satellite images give an idea of what happened. This is the 19 kilometer long crossing, that's 12 miles, which you can see here linking Russia on the right of the screen to Crimea. You can make out smoke coming from one span of the bridge. And this closer image shows how two parts of the road bridge have collapsed. One carriageway remains intact, but at the top of the screen, you can see what appears to be flames coming from a train on the railway bridge. Russia has promised to fix the damaged sections as soon as possible. Ukrainian officials have not indicated that their forces were behind the attack, although they do appear to have welcomed the development. Our Russia editor Steve Rosenberg reports. It is the bridge the Kremlin built. And it was under attack. An explosion at dawn. This was the result. Russian officials claim a lorry had been blown up here and that the fire then spread to a fuel train. Whatever the cause, you can see the damage. This is the bridge that links Russia to annexed Crimea, and parts of the road had collapsed into the sea. Later, investigators announced that three people had been killed. They've opened a criminal case. The 12-mile-long road and rail bridge is not only strategically important to the Kremlin as a supply route, it's also a symbol of the Russian annexation of Crimea. Vladimir Putin opened it in 2018, getting behind the wheel to show that, as far as he was concerned, Russia and Crimea were joined forever. Very different scenes here. Pro-Kremlin commentators have blamed Ukraine for the explosion but there's been no claim of responsibility from Kiev. It is noticeable how the situation has changed here and the messaging. A few months ago, Russians were being told by their leaders and by the state media that the so-called special military operation would be relatively brief and victorious. Now they're being told that there are problems, that Russia is losing ground. And they learned about the attack on a hugely symbolic location the Crimean Bridge. News of the attack has sparked concern amongst the public here. But the Russians we spoke to had different ideas about how the Kremlin should react. It's worrying, Stas says. War is always bad. They should have done this differently with negotiations. But Olga says Putin must respond. What a birthday present they gave him. We should blow up the train lines Ukraine uses to get its military aid from America. This is NATO's fault. But from Vladimir Putin, there's been no reaction yet to what happened here. No hint as to how he will respond. Steve Rosenberg, BBC News, St. Petersburg. Meanwhile, officials from the Ukrainian city of Zaporizhia say a dozen Russian airstrikes have killed at least 12 people as several residential buildings were destroyed in overnight shelling. Our correspondent Hugo Bachega has more. The governor of the region of Zaporizhia said 12 missiles were fired at the city overnight. This attack happened at 2 o'clock in the morning as people were sleeping and residential areas were hit. Some pictures from the scene show uh, extensive damage. Uh, a section of a block of flats has uh, collapsed and President Zelensky described it as a merciless attack on peaceful people. 
Zaporizhia is relatively close to uh, the front lines. It's a major city in the south of the country and has become a frequent target uh, of attacks by Russian forces. And the Ukrainians have been saying that this is the way Russia is reacting to its military uh, defeats by attacking civilian sites, uh, civilian infrastructure across the country. And Zaporizhia has been a frequent target of those attacks. The attack on Zaporizhia happened hours after the explosion that hit the main, uh, the only bridge uh, connecting occupied Crimea to Russia, an important uh, bridge uh, that's been used by uh, Russia to move military equipment, ammunition, personnel from Russia to southern parts of Ukraine. It's also very symbolic. This bridge was opened in 2018 by President Putin as perhaps a symbol that uh, Crimea was Russian. This uh, peninsula was uh, illegally annexed by Russia in 2014. The Ukrainians have been saying that they want to recapture all territory that's been under Russian occupation, including Crimea, even though uh, officials here have celebrated uh, the explosion that happened on Saturday. They haven't officially acknowledged that the Ukrainians had any involvement in this explosion. Hugo Bachega. Well, we can talk now to Dr. Samir Puri, who is a security expert and former ceasefire monitor in Ukraine and also author of the book Russia's Road to War with Ukraine, Invasion Amidst the Ashes of Empires. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, how do you think Vladimir Putin will be responding in private and how he might respond in other ways to what's happening?